Hello everybody and welcome to this Key Stage 3 science video. In this video I will take a look at some questions focusing on the topics respiration, exercise and movement and what I will do is I will model the answers to these questions so you can pause them and have a go at them first if you haven't already done them. And what I'll do in this video is I will annotate the questions with my thoughts in blue and my answers will be written in green so those are the things that will get you the marks and I might highlight some important things in yellow as well. So this first question is about exercise and there's a student Sally who is measuring her pulse rate and the pulse rate is the number of times your heart beats per minute and she is swimming 10 lengths of a swimming pool and so she's measuring her pulse rate before and after this exercise and obviously when you exercise your heart starts to beat faster so the pulse rate that she will record will be a higher pulse rate so her pulse rate will increase after she has swam the 10 lengths. What is the name of the liquid in the circulatory system that is being pumped around by the heart and that is the blood and the list shows three useful substances and one waste product and the waste product produced by the body is carbon dioxide. Now this whole question is about respiration in fact but they introduce it with a question about dancing and movement and muscles and so an important word here this is Nancy and she's moving her arms and legs as she dances using pairs of antagonistic muscles. Now antagonistic muscles are like your bicep and your tricep and so here is her bicep and when that contracts her arm will move this way and what will happen is the muscle will sort of bunch up and thicken and that's what you see in the sort of the cartoon muscles that have contracted and somebody's flexing their muscles. And then if she wants to move her arm the other way, I'll switch my colours just this time, and if she wants to move her arm this way, then this is the muscle that will contract the tricep. And it's the same idea with the legs as well. When one muscle contracts, the other one relaxes. And so any movements, they will always be in pairs. And that's because muscles can only pull things when they contract. And so they have pairs and one muscle contracts to pull something one way and the other contracts to pull it the other way. And so the answer here is the third one. As one muscle contracts, the other relaxes. This part of the question focus on Nancy's breathing and it says that her breathing changes because she needs more oxygen and the graph below shows how the volume of air in her lungs changes when she dances. So we've got time on the x-axis so this is the longer that she's dancing and then we've got the volume of air in Nancy's lungs and you can see that the volume is going up and down as she's breathing in and out. And you can also see, by the way, that the volume of air in Nancy's lungs never goes to zero. So even when she exhales, which is on the way down here, she doesn't breathe out all the air in her lungs. Now let's move on to the question. The question says, from the graph, give two ways that her breathing changes when she dances. So there's quite a few different ways. First of all, we notice that this graph goes more extreme. It goes larger up here which means she's breathing in more air. So I would start with that one, is that she gets more air, or oxygen is probably better, but it's not only oxygen that she's breathing in, it's nitrogen as well. So she gets more air or she gets more oxygen. Those are both fine. Or you could just say that she's taking in a greater volume of air or she's breathing more air out. Now also, I don't know if you noticed this, but at the beginning, the peaks and the troughs, they're further apart. And what that means is she's breathing more slowly. Whereas when we get over here, the peaks are a lot more bunched up. And that means that her breathing is getting faster. And that's what I would put next, uh, that her breathing gets faster. Or breathing speeds up, or she takes more breaths or something like that. So that would be something that I would say. Now you could also say that uh, her breathing gets deeper 
or she takes bigger breaths or something like that. So I'm going to put an extra option on here. So you don't have to write this one because it did say only two, but you might have put this as one of your answers and I want you to know that that is okay. Now the final question says that Nancy's muscle cells produce carbon dioxide as she dances and your body has to get rid of that carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is not good for your body to keep inside it. It, it, it will feel really weird and you'd, you'd feel faint if you didn't get rid of your carbon dioxide. So which of the following shows how the carbon dioxide is removed from Nancy's body? Now notice they all end in nose, so she's breathing out through her nose, so we don't need to look there. And they all begin with the muscle cells that have made the carbon dioxide as they've respired. And so the big question mark is, where do we go from here? So the muscle cells produce the carbon dioxide and it goes on a journey. It has to go into the blood. So it can't go straight from the muscles to the windpipe. So it must go into the blood. And then from the blood, it needs to get out and the kind of the gateway, if you like, to getting in and out of the blood is the lungs. So the lungs would be next. And so, in fact, we know the right answer already now because lungs being next, well, we've already ruled out this second one down. So it must be the third one because it can't go from the blood into your windpipe and then back into the lungs. That one doesn't make sense there because the lungs has got to be um, before the windpipe because your windpipe is what connects your lungs to your mouth and your nose. And so the correct answer has got to be the third one down. This question kind of builds on the question about Nancy the dancer and it's about human arm and we can see the muscles and we can see the joints and we can see the bones and the question is saying that the person wants to move this arm upwards and the question is what do the biceps and the triceps do and so what needs to happen is this muscle here the tricep needs to pull on that bone to make the arm lift up in that direction and so the bicep is going to contract and squash up and the tricep is going to stretch out and relax and so the correct answer that you need to give is the bicep contracts and the tricep relaxes. The next question is about ligaments and ligaments hold bones together at a joint and I'll just highlight the two ligaments that are shown here. They are going bone to bone and why must these ligaments be able to stretch slightly? And the answer is simply that if they couldn't stretch they would snap and so what they do is they allow movement or they allow bending when we contract and relax our muscles. Now we are zooming in on an elbow joint even more and we can see the ligaments again in this position just to highlight them a little bit better and then we've got some cartilage here on the ends of each of the bones it's shaded in black on your actual question and then between the cartilage there is some fluid. Now the ends of the bone are covered in this smooth material and the question says why are cartilage and fluid needed in a joint and the simple answer is that it is for smooth movement and so without them the movements would not be smooth but you could also say that they reduce friction you don't need to say both by the way so this is definitely an or or you could also say to stop the bones rubbing together or you could say to lubricate the joint any of those is absolutely fine. And then there is a final question here showing somebody where some cartilage has broken off and the question says how will this damage affect the joint and again you've got a few different answers but effectively it is sort of the opposite of the question that we've just answered. Without the cartilage the bones would rub or they would wear down or there is more friction or there is more stiffness to the joint or movement would be difficult or in fact this might cause pain and it could be arthritis which is a, a condition of the joints where it hurts when the joints move. This next question looks at the effect of a cola drink on a student's heart rate and so he's measuring his heart rate first of all for five minutes when he's sitting down then he's drinking some cola and then he's measuring his heart rate at regular intervals after he's had the drink. 
and you can see on our axes we've got the time on the x-axis the x is across remember and we've got the heart rate in beats per minute on the y-axis y up to the sky and so the first question about this says why did Harry measure his heart rate every minute for five minutes before drinking the cola and the idea is that he needs to know what his resting pulse rate is and so that's one answer that you could give. You could also have said that he needs to be able to compare his pulse rate before and after drinking the cola, or simply he would know if the pulse rate had changed. Then Harry says cola affects his heart. What evidence is there on the graph to show that his heart rate has been affected? Well, it's gone up after he's drunk the cola. So he drank the cola after five minutes, so he drank it here. And then you can see that the heart rate has gone up not steadily, but it's definitely gone up every minute or so after having the drink. Um, you could just simply say that his heart rate went up, the graph shows his heart rate's changed, or you could say the line goes up, or you could say the points go higher. Any of those, absolutely fine. Here we've got two students having a conversation about the results. Harry is saying that cola affects my heart rate, and Yasmin is saying cola makes your heart beat faster. Explain why Yasmin's conclusion is better than Harry's. Well, to put this simply, Harry is saying that there is an effect, there is a change, but Yasmin is saying what the change is. So she's describing the direction of the change. She's saying how the heart rate has changed, whereas Harry is just saying that there is a change. And then finally, Yasmin said, we should also me measure Harry's heart rate after he drinks fizzy water. How would measuring that improve the investigation? Well, the benefit of doing this is it would allow us to see whether fizziness has an effect or whether sparkling drinks have an effect. Or to show off, we could say that it would allow us to see if the carbon dioxide or the carbonation has had an effect. Or you could say that using more drinks would give you more evidence or different drinks. And finally, the really most technical word that you could say is that drinking fizzy water would be a control. And that's something that you use as your comparison, your reference, when you're trying to prove your results. This next question is about the lungs and breathing, and this is looking at different chemicals that are contained in cigarettes and the impact that they have on the body. And so we have to match the substances up to their effect. And so carbon monoxide is what causes red blood cells to carry less oxygen. And the nicotine is what causes the addiction and tar can cause lung cancer. Another issue that can cause difficulties is issues to do with the coronary artery, which is the artery that supplies the heart muscle with its blood. And this is a diagram showing the heart and where the coronary arteries are. And the second diagram, although they're calling it diagram one here, is showing the artery itself. We're sort of like taking a cross section through it and we can see that the blood is moving this way and there are lots of red blood cells here and this is the wall of the artery. And then smoking can cause damage to the coronary artery and diagram two is showing a section through the damaged artery. And so you can see that we've got a layer of fat which is a lot bigger than on the artery in the previous section. And then we've got a blood clot, which is a blockage. So these circles or these sort of ovals, these are the red blood cells and they're all grouped together, causing a blood clot in the second picture. And so we've got some red blood cells that are just sort of there on the left hand side of the clot, trying to move to the right. And the question says, give one change in the coronary artery other than the blood clot that has formed. And we are probably going to focus on the fat here. We've got a fat deposit, or you could simply say that the artery is narrower or it's blocked. Now, respiration takes place in muscle cells of the heart. Explain why the blood clot is going to prevent these cells from respiring normally. Now, oxygen is needed for respiration, and so less oxygen can get to the cells or to the heart muscle. Or you could probably say no oxygen. Also, glucose is required for respiration, and so less glucose will get through to the heart muscle as well because of this blockage in the coronary artery. Again, you could probably say no glucose. And then last of all, you could say that less blood 
is getting to the cells or to the heart muscle, or you could say it's stopping the flow of blood. And so you only need to say two of these three things to get the two marks that are available. This final question is looking how the volume of blood per minute needed to supply different parts of the body changes when people exercise. And so we've got the different parts of the body on the x-axis and the volume of blood per minute on the y-axis. And then there is the black bar that is the amount of blood needed during exercise, whereas the grey bar is the volume of blood per minute needed before exercise is happening. And so this question says, explain why muscles need more blood during exercise. Give three reasons, and they're saying three reasons, and we've got three marks. And so remember, the blood is what transports the oxygen and the glucose to our cells. And during respiration, energy is released because of the oxygen reacting with that glucose. The energy is released from the glucose. And so when we exercise, energy needs to be released more quickly. And that's because the cells will respire more quickly. And in addition to that, we can say that the glucose is used up more quickly. Or we could say that the oxygen is used up more quickly. And so we've already got more than three points here. We can say any of these three, but that's talking about the things that are needed for the respiration to take place. But in addition to that, we make carbon dioxide and we make water and that needs to be removed. And so we could also say that carbon dioxide is produced and removed quickly. Or we could say the same thing about water, exactly the same. Water is produced and removed. And respiration also produces heat energy. So it's released the energy from the glucose and some of that energy gets released in the form of heat. And this heat is produced and needs to be removed quickly as well. So that's a further point that we could make. And Last of all, you could get some credit for one sentence getting you two marks. So you could say for two marks, blood transports more oxygen. And so that's getting the idea that the blood is transporting the oxygen, but it's also telling you that the blood is needing to transport more oxygen. And that's the same for carbon dioxide and glucose, etc. as well. The next question says, look at the bar chart. Why should you not go for a long run just after eating a meal? Well, we need to look at the bars here. The blood supply to the digestive system is here. And then when you exercise, the blood supply goes down by more than half, maybe a third as before. And so as a result, the digestive system will slow down because it's got less blood and therefore less respiration and less energy. And so therefore less food will be absorbed. So you can say either of those. The digestive system slows down or less food is absorbed. And finally, why is it important that the blood supply to the brain is constant? Notice here the level does not drop at all during exercise. And the reason is that the brain or the brain cells will die if they get too little oxygen or no oxygen or no glucose. Or, a bit dramatic that first one, but you could also say instead that the person might feel faint or dizzy or lose concentration. Or you could just simply state that the brain needs regular oxygen and glucose supplied. Okay, that's the end of those questions. I hope this was a useful walkthrough. I'll see you again soon.